Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. Last episode, we took a look at the Mockingboard V1A board from Ultimate Micro, and while we had generally positive reviews, uh, we identified a couple problems with it, and this episode I'd like to go through what the issues are, and also some mods that you can do on your board to fix those problems. So let's get started. So the first problem that I noticed was actually the sound was coming out of both channels equally. So it wasn't, it should be the treble um, should be in the left speaker and the bass uh, clef should be in the right speaker, but it sounded like they, it was all coming out of both speakers uh, and there wasn't any channel separation. And I contacted Tom Arnold about this and he actually suggested that it had to do with the input um, from the computer itself. So you can see here, I don't have the cable hooked up right now, but basically you would run the, the wire that comes with the Mockingboard V1A from the uh, pins on the motherboard over here, right back there, and you would run that cable over to the Mockingboard itself. Uh, the problem is that is just a single channel, it's mono, and on the Mockingboard it was actually trying to just split that between both channels and so it was actually bleeding over um, all of the sound, uh, regardless of whether it was coming from the, the com from the Apple computer itself or from the, the mocking board, it was actually bleeding all of the sound into both channels. So the solution is to actually just cut a trace on the, the mocking board, and so I'll just show you how to do that real quick right now. Okay, so here we're looking at the uh, left corner of the mocking board, and you can see this is where the input comes from the uh, Apple computer uh, sound and it goes through through a resistor so this one actually this pin goes to ground and this is the one that's actually carrying the sound itself so this is the mono channel um, it goes through a resistor just to cut down the uh, the volume and then it gets split between two capacitors which just act as filters and then both of these go you can see one of them is the left channel this bottom one and the top one is the right channel and then they both just go off to the rest of the circuit and so this is where the problem is because the sound gets split equally between the two but it also lets the sound from the rest of the circuit get mixed together and muddled so all you need to do is right here and you can see I've already done this you just need to cut the trace on the board between these two capacitors so it's actually on the right hand side of the capacitors there's a trace that goes between these two legs on the two capacitors and you just need to take an exacto knife and just scrape away at that until the two legs are no longer connected and so effectively what this will do is it'll chop out the uh, the right channel from the uh, from the sounds from the Apple so you'll only hear when the Apple computer itself is making s noises um, you'll only hear that out of the left channel but this is a, a small price to pay uh, for actually restoring the uh, separate channels for the rest of the mocking board. So I did that and I tried it and it sounded a lot better because you could actually hear separation between the two channels. The problem that I then discovered is that the left and right channels were actually reversed. First I thought it was just maybe my speakers that were uh, I had wired backwards but I was able to confirm this just using headphones. After I contacted Tom again uh, he looked at the schematic and he traced this back to an error that had been made uh, about 10 years ago when one of the, uh, the original locking boards had been cloned and then this clone was actually made um, from that clone and when the time uh, that first clone was made they had actually mixed up the left and right channels. So that's also fixable. To do that we're actually going to look over in the other corner of the board. So right up here uh, above the two uh, chips right here. There's two sets of resistors here and these go from the left and right channels and what we're going to do is we're actually just going to remove these resistors, actually this one here and this one, and we're just going to wire wire them up opposite. So the, the input from this one is going to go to the output of this one and then the 
uh, input from this one is going to go to the output from this resistor. And so that'll just effectively flip the resistors before they actually get to the rest of the circuitry. Um, I think we want to do it here. And the reason why is because this is before it actually gets amped. There's a little mini amplifier here, and we probably want to um, reverse the channels here before actually getting to the amplifier part of it, as opposed to just changing it later on. So let's break out the soldering iron and remove these resistors and rewire them and see what happens. Okay, so we're ready to do surgery. Uh, I'm gonna be removing these two one kilo ohm resistors and replacing them with two new ones that just go to different um, spots. So first thing I'm gonna do is just cut these off. Okay, so I've cut off the resistors and then I'm just using a pair of forceps here and just attaching them to the remaining wires and then just flipping the board over and heating up the solder uh, on the pin there and if I'm lucky it'll just fall right out so you heat it up with the force up attached um, and then it'll just pull right out and so I'll do that for the other ones and then just clean it up with some the solder sucker and then put in the new resistors alright so now we've got our two resistors positioned so I'm replacing them with uh, 1k resistors which is the exact same thing as what was there so now we have this middle resistor here which just goes from uh, this hole here back to this hole and then the top resistor actually goes from this hole here all the way over to this one so basically uh, at this point the left is going to become right and the right is going to become uh, left so all we need to do is go ahead and solder these in I'm going to go ahead and secure them down on this side with just a piece of tape just to keep them there and then we'll just solder them in from the other side. Alright, so we've got the Mockingboard back in Apple IIe and we've now hooked up the uh, cable from the uh, logic board over to the uh, the Mockingboard so all the Apple sounds should come out of the mocking board as well and here we're firing up the uh, music construction set and in a minute it'll switch to the demo tune so what we should hear is the treble clef should come out of the left speaker and the bass clef should come out of the right speaker so here comes the sound and sure enough Okay, so the last thing I want to try is the sound effects demo that comes with the mocking board itself. So you can download this disc image uh, from Asimov and uh, it just comes with a variety of sound clips including some uh, songs. Uh, but basically for the sound effects, the first one here called Gunshot, uh, that should appear or come out of the left speaker, which it does. And then if you go to the next one, the machine gun, that should come out of the right speaker. So it looks like everything's working well. The only minor problem now is that the sound from the Apple II is actually now coming out of the right speaker, which is a little weird. So if I have time, I might go back and actually try and reverse the, um, the input from the uh, logic board so it actually feeds it into the what is now the left channel or the correct channel, just because I'm kind of used to the, the Apple sound coming out of the left side of the computer and it might be a little weird to have it coming out of the right. But maybe I'll save that for next episode and maybe that's enough for this one. Alright, so there you have it. There's the Mockingboard V1A and designed by Tom Arnold. Uh, just a couple modifications need to be made. Um, I talked to Henry Corbis about this and he actually says he's happy to help people. So if you want to get your mocking board working perfectly with the correct left and right channels, just go ahead and contact Henry and he'll be glad to help you out. Um, doesn't make too much difference left or right, but I just wanted it to be the same as the original uh, card that was available back in the 80s. So go ahead and uh, pick up your mocking board V1A from Ultima and Apple and uh, have fun playing Ultima 4. Thanks, and I'll uh, see you next time.